Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, cool. Yeah, I think we'll we'll just. I mean, it's meant to be a super casual chat, uh, but I do have like a few questions prepared. Uh, but um, yeah, like just I mean, tell us more about uh, Strips Finance. How did it, how did you start it? What was the idea behind it? Uh, yeah, for sure. So um, you know the the inception of the idea really uh, came about uh, you know in my trading of uh, you know basis and. Uh, uh, futures in both traditional finance and, and also in crypto. And so in uh, derivatives, uh, there is this concept of funding rate um, on your perpetual uh, derivatives. You know, think about FTX, BitMEX, Binance. And um, and then subsubsequently, um, you, you, you have the funding rates on uh, or, or uh, interest rates on lending and borrowing protocols like Aave and Compound. And so what Strips is, is we're a derivatives exchange that allows people to trade interest rates um, and funding rates as an in independent asset class uh, in and of itself. So, for example, if you believe that the uh, lending rate of uh, Aave is uh, going to go up in the next day, um, then you can actually uh, express that view and uh, profit from that by going long an interest rate derivative on strips. So we try to make it easy for people to speculate uh, on interest rates and also to hedge their interest rates um, if, if they want to do so as well. Um, and we started in April um, of uh, this year and so far, we've uh, been expanding quite rapidly. Um, we closed our uh, uh, seed round and and also um, our private round uh, a couple of months ago, and we added investors like Multicoin, Sequoia US, um, uh, Defiance Capital, Mechanism Capital, and Crypto.com. So um, we're really excited to accelerate the transition of uh, DeFi and, uh, you know, our, our aim is ultimately to um, uh, have DeFi eat uh, TradFi. I think that's already happening. <laughs> I think yeah. uh, there was a, you know, the on ramps are just a bridge from uh, DeFi to TradFi. Uh, it's a very slow bridge. Um, cool. Uh, where, I, I was actually wondering, uh, where did the name come from? That's, uh, I know it's an off bit question. But yeah. How did you come up with that name? Um, you know, if uh, people think there's, uh, you know, some, uh, uh, you know, connotation with some, uh, um, you know, uh, not safe for work uh, type of, uh, you know, <laughs> ideas. But actually, um, STRIPS is a very um, well-known uh, uh, acronym in traditional finance. So STRIPS actually stands for uh, Separate Trading of Interest and Principal Security in, in right. uh, traditional finance. So so it's uh, it's actually an acronym of this really long, um derivative uh and it's it's uh used to trade interest rates in in banks in uh, hedge funds and um and so we, we basically took that acronym and we felt that it was uh it rolls off the tongue um and uh you know we adopted it as as our name cool uh that explains it <laughs> have you have you actually mentioned that anywhere on the website or on the white paper because i think a lot of people might have the same <laughs> question um, yeah actually it's a pretty good story yeah, we, we, we probably should. Um, so we don't we don't um, write it in our website uh, of where where the name is originally from. But um, yeah, we probably should. We we also like to let people's imaginations run wild as well, because I think our, our story is a lot, uh, you know, more bland um, than than, you know, most imaginations. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got it. Did you go from like, how long did it take? for you to go from an idea to starting to execute it you, you mentioned you kind of launched in in april or you kind yeah. of incorporated or how would you how would you call it like officially yeah. went on full time um, yeah yeah so i i left uh so previous to strips i was actually a full-time um trader i was uh, head of trading and uh, business development at uh, haymeyer uh which is a chicago-based uh um prop shop that uh, does um, trading, market making, et cetera. And um, uh, I left in April to uh, kind of delve full-time full into DeFi. And 
uh, back then, really, I, I all I had was an idea and a piece of paper, right? And um, I, I have to give a ton of credit to uh, you know Roman and the team at uh, Crypto Jobs this because um, our first hire. Uh, who was also our CTO was from Crypto Jobs List, and so without without uh, Crypto Jobs List, we we wouldn't be where we are here today because um, you know we we hired our first employee and and also our most important um, employee um, from from uh, Crypto Jobs List, and and um, you know subsequently once we uh, had uh, brought on board our CTO. Um, I would say maybe two or three weeks um, after I left my uh, full-time job. Um, and then uh, we um, hired uh, our CEO in, in the same week. Um, and, um, you know, that that kind of uh, built our uh, founding team um, of, uh, you know, three of us. And, uh, you know, things just kind of evolved from there. And now we're probably... Um, uh, team. We're right now a team of ten, um, and we're just onboarding another uh, engineer, so that would uh, put us at eleven strong. Um, and uh, you know, I think Crypto Jobs List has has been a really important um, platform for us to to find talent. Um, and uh, I think that uh, what you guys are doing is is really invaluable in in this space because, um, you know, I think having capital is one thing having an idea is another thing but really my view is that the most valuable piece of a company is is its people and um what what is a company or what is a project it is simply the combination of uh a group of people's ideas and and thoughts and, in a coordinated manner right in executed in a coordinated manner and um that that is the most important part and so I think um, you guys are, are doing an incredible job. Thanks for the kind words. I uh, wasn't expecting a testimonial right in the beginning, but uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, once again, congrats on getting um, CTO. And I think it's, um, and congrats to getting it from us, <laughs> from Crypto Jobs. But uh, I think it's, it's really, in this market, it's so competitive. Yep. Getting anyone technical, getting any engineer, getting solidity engineers, uh, and especially CTOs. So I think oh, there's quite a bit of, uh, you know, also testament to what you're doing as well, like that you were able to attract the right um, talent there. H how did you make the decision, by the way, to, uh, uh, you know, after going through different resumes, through different applicants, what did that, what did stand out in uh, your kind of current CTO's profile that really clicked in yeah. for you? Um, that's a really good question. So obviously you have the, uh, technical skills, um, that you look for in, in our, uh, CTO, but, um, more importantly, when you're looking for someone that is, you know, one of your founding team members, uh, you know, one of your earliest hires, uh, you really want to have someone that wh whose values are closely aligned with yours and, um, are in it for, for the long term. Right, and so we want to we we wanted to not just hire someone that was technically strong, but also was in it for the tech. You know, unironically, you know, in it for the tech, and um and and not simply just here for like a pump and dump scheme. Which um th this is harder. This type of personality is is harder to filter out. And so um it took us uh multiple um. Uh, interviews and and uh calls um back and forth um and, and it's also a, a chance for the other person to understand more about uh my values and and you know the direction that i see strips to be in the future and ultimately i think what what um uh took me over the line was um the the fact that the cto uh the candidate um was willing to uh, delay any type of payment um, of his salary or of his tokens until we went to mainnet, right? So that fact in itself, uh, you know, showed me that okay, this guy is not in it for the short term, and he, um, you know, he he he's confident enough that uh, he he's willing to forego his pay until we launch a mainnet. Um, but ultimately, uh, you know, you know, we we wanted to be 
fair and 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 you know we uh, ended up with an uh, arrangement that that was still um, you know fair for him and and also uh, performance based, right? And so I think having um, uh, having a good uh, remuneration or comp package is is also really important, and that's something that I spend a lot of time thinking about. Is you know how do I align um, our our people uh, with the vision of the company, um, both on a spiritual or, or on a emotional level, but also on a incentives and financial level. It's very generous from your CTO to delay uh, kind of the, the payment until. You're going full a full uh sorry on on mainnet i think it's uh yeah requires kind of a lot a lot of trust from um from like day day zero um as far as i remember you you're not necessarily an engineer you're not a programmer right yeah i'm a you know I'm not a programmer in the you know traditional yeah. sense i'm uh self taught um you know i've always been very interested in programs and and writing programs since i was a kid so my first exposure to uh, programming was actually when I was uh, seven or eight, um, mm -hmm. when I was playing this game called RuneScape. Um, and back then, um, there, there were some pretty primitive uh, bots that, that were in the market and they were open source and free. So, um, you know, I, I played around with those mm -hmm. and, and wrote a couple of uh, very basic Java yeah. programs that so, you. So... Yeah. And, and, yeah, and I so... think mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, go on. <laughs> But yeah, and so kind of like um, afterwards, you know, tr my trading career uh, also uh, forced me to learn a lot of programming in Python and, and uh, C Sharp to build trading programs and, and algorithms. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so, but I know I've never had a formal training in programming, but, you know, I'm pretty comfortable reading and, and writing code. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah, I think my, my question was more around, um, usually it's much easier to hire someone of your own kind. So for example, if you're an experienced like trader or like, you know, econ economist or finance professional or a marketing professional, you kind of know what you need to be looking for and you yeah. know the right questions to ask. But if you're trying yeah. to hire someone of like a different, of a different prof like, you know, category of, of uh, kind of work or line of work, it's usually a bit harder. So I was just wondering yeah. for someone who is not necessarily a full-time engineer, who's not a, like a career engineer or a career de developer, Mm. would you say that were there like some challenges for you personally to make that mm. call did you have to like advise get advice from from third yeah. parties from your friends from other like technical advisors that you had um yeah that's a that's a great question you know surprisingly um i know just enough to get by <laughs> you know yeah, i know i know just enough to know when someone's bullshitting and luckily uh you know i had that that surface level of knowledge um that i could detect when someone's bullshitting me um versus when someone knows what they're talking about um and uh i think i i also feel very very fortunate and, and lucky that um we were able to find our cto so so quickly and and find someone of of that caliber um very quickly um through crypto jobs list and that that saved me a lot of trouble and once we um you know found our cto then really all of the future technical interviews uh with developers are um tested with our you know are done with our cto so i i <laughs> luckily um you know don't have to show my lack of experience uh with um you know programming there but uh yes I, I feel very fortunate um definitely um you know for uh crypto jobs list as well to find our first uh cto i think that was a pivotal definitely a pivotal moment um in our company um you know looking back um you know i, I think having technical advisors would have helped but I, i'm not sure how much more it would have helped maybe like it would have been a marginal improvement of you know ten to twenty percent in terms of efficiency or, or like filtering the the right candidates, but it wouldn't have been uh, uh, you know a major hurdle for me just because I I knew just enough to separate the uh, bullshit from uh, people that that actually knew what they were talking about. Awesome. So, and as far as I understand, you're remote from day day one. Is everyone? Yeah, not in the same country. Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> even to this day, I still haven't met our CTO face to face. Um, 
And we are 100% remote, uh, like you said. And uh, it, myself and our CEO are uh, in the same country. Um, I'm not going to say where in case I dox myself, but uh, uh, we, the rest of our team are uh, globally um, situated. So uh, all the way from Asia to Europe to um, the uh, States, uh, you know, we basically have people working around the clock um, in both marketing, in engineering, um, and, and operations. So, uh, you know, we run a very lean team, um, but, uh, you know, I think with crypto, you, you kind of have to be 24-7. So um, that's where finding the right people, again, is so important and also so difficult is, you know, because the typical... Um, uh, you know, nine to five worker is not going to be able to understand when you say, by the way, you have to work on Saturday and Sundays as well. And, and um, you know, be, be on call 24 uh, seven, right? I think most people wouldn't be able to understand that. And so it really takes a special kind of character um, to, to be in crypto um, and, and, and also to work for a crypto company. Definitely. Um, I think it's a, uh... How do you how do you usually like identify that where someone is crypto ready? Because everyone's applying when they're applying to jobs, right? Or they're applying to work in crypto. Quite a lot of people are not necessarily necessarily like ready, or they're ready. They're not mm. even ready for like remote first work. Um, yeah. But not even to mention crypto that is like twenty four seven three six to five. Um, yeah. What it, are your like yeah. favorite um, kind of interview questions and interview process itself? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, my favorite question, uh, that I like to ask people is, um, to tell me about their most difficult time in their life. Um, and this, this question shows, uh, a lot, um, about the candidate because, uh, people that have gone through very difficult periods in their life, um, are, and, and come out stronger, um, I think are the type of characters that, um, we want to attract and ultimately succeed, right? Because, um, I, you know, just speaking from my own personal experience with, um, you know, our, our core team members is that uh, I think people that are really successful um, have some degree of insecurity, right? Whether that's uh, from their childhood or whether that's from their peers, whatever. But um, they turn this, they translate this insecurity into uh, motivation, and 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 also the the willing willingness to go above and beyond to succeed. Because I think for the average person that feels that that doesn't have this, you know, insecurity or of uh, trying to impress other people, um, they might not necessarily have that same motivation of you know trying to beat their peers right um so you know it's kind of uh funny that you know we're trying to find it, it's you know it's funny when i say we're trying to find insecure people but um i think that it's kind of true to to a degree um and secondly is uh you know with the the you know when we ask hey you know what was your most difficult period in, uh of your life it also shows us their mental strength right um and and how they uh put bad situations into perspective right and i think um if they're able to uh translate a bad situation into um an empowering uh lesson or or uh somehow make them stronger as a result that's a very powerful tool um to to have because that means that you're basically unbreakable right and um you know nasim talib uh, would coin that as um anti fragile right and i think bitcoin is a, is one of the best examples of anti fragility because the more someone attacks bitcoin you know we've seen so many boom and bust cycles but ultimately bitcoin comes back stronger i'm definitely stealing that question when i'll be interviewing people <laughs> I, th I believe you were recommended to ask uh, for me to ask that question. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you definitely had a good answer prepared. Yeah, this <laughs> is, uh, I really appreciate it, like the, your insightful point about, you know, how people with certain insecurities, they try to kind of overachieve or kind of outperform yeah. and to kind of 
to uh, you know out compete their own insecurity or out do themselves yeah. or, like prove themselves. That's a very uh, strong motivator. And and I think uh, this is just my take, by the way. <laughs> it's uh, by no means uh, you know uh, I, I I don't want to generalize everyone, but mm. um, you know I think that it, it does take some form of like uh uh dif- you know differentiator for someone to really want to um go down the path of giving up stability a stable job and jumping into crypto right um and uh that that says a lot about people um and it, you know i think a couple months ago it would have been easier to find um it would have been easier to 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 test um the loyalty so to speak of or, or authenticity of people in in uh, that we interview because firstly you know before crypto or defi was sexy um you know the fact that someone's interviewing for a defi company says a lot uh, already but now it's uh you know it's a little bit more difficult um to tell whether someone's in it for the long term or whether they're just in it for the short term and um you know there are a couple of things that we look at like um you know how how long have they been in? You know we uh, we sometimes ask people what their DGEN score is. What was the most wrecked cool. <laughs> that they, you know that they've they've been if if they've been in, in like some uh, of the like algo stablecoin, uh, uh, you know wrecked farms. Um, then you know immediately we know like this guy's one of us. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I definitely agree with you in terms of especially like for this. Of this market cycle, a lot of newcomers are there. I mean, every every bull market, there are a lot of people flocking, like you know, moving into the space. And uh, I usually kind of tell companies, and you know, crypto jobs was started in 2017, and we had a massive down down market in 2018, 19, even beginning of 2020. And uh, you know, we definitely see a lot of companies not hiring because a lot of companies. Mm-hmm. Um, Treasuries are in crypto, like post ICO uh, yeah. craze. A lot of people had uh, just all their all their corporate funds in in ETH, and ETH is like seventy dollars, twenty dollars. No one wants to liquidate like hundreds, yeah. <laughs> whatever hundreds of thousands of dollars to uh, do payroll, so they might as well like not hire. And yeah. but at the same time, it is indeed like one of the best times to hire because signal to noise ratio is like better than ever. Oh all yeah, the people for who sure. will be applying. During, like, for example, when when was the crash this this year? June, June, end of yeah, April? May May to June of, of yeah. this year, yeah. <laughs> like, so many people got liquidated. Everyone's like, okay, time to take a vacation. Yeah, I think people you know also been asking, <laughs> let's take, let's take a vacation. Yeah, uh, a lot of people we know have uh, been tweeting that. <clears throat> um, yeah, and um, yeah, I definitely I definitely subscribe uh, to to what he just said. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> and and I think the other thing is that um, you know I think it's a great thing that more uh, Web two engineers are starting to uh, come into Web three, and I think um, yeah, I, that that is a trend that I have noticed is accelerating, um, and it's uh, you know it, it, it's a good thing. Um, you know, I, I think that developers have a different um, set of motivations and uh uh kind of um things that they you know is it, important to them versus just like oh, okay crypto is going to all-time high right like i i think the best developers that we found are more um pro- you know problem solvers and, and people that generally are just curious of of um solving difficult problems rather than looking at you know the price of, of bitcoin for example and um like we we try to um, find those type of people that are uh, genuinely curious um, about uh, difficult problems rather than just like copy pasting like pancake swap or sushi swap, you know, and then launching a new. There's not saying that that's that's necessarily a bad thing, right? Um, we've seen a lot of successful protocols do that, um, but I think uh, you know for 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 us, we we just want to do do cool shit you know we just want to solve interesting problems and uh do things that we feel are worth doing Mm -hmm. have you have you um like a lot of people been applying to uh, to work with trips uh have (laughs) you see like have you just kind of discovered in yourself any pet peeves that you really hate that when people do or say 
or put on their resume when they apply or they try to find a job in crypto? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, you have the, you know, typical like um, uh, CV that overemphasizes on their contribution to a certain project. And then, you know, when you ask them about when, when you ask them more deep, uh, you know, deeply about with their involvement in, in a project, um, they, you know, are either, uh, they try to avoid that question or, or they, you know, they, they try to kind of bullshit, um, you know, an answer. But, um, one of the questions that, that we like to ask is, you know, what, what is the most difficult problem? um that you faced uh during you know your previous project um and and how did you solve it right because uh number one um it it makes them uh you know it it, it basically will separate the wheat from the chaff um because that will it, it means that they had to solve a original problem um and uh they you know and then they had to come up with an original uh, solution, right? Um, and uh, I think that um, you know other pet peeves. Um, it's uh, yeah, I think that that's my main pet peeve uh, so far. I, I I'm always the um, my my co founder uh, co founder and CEO. She always tells me that I'm the forever optimist, um, and I always assume the best in people. So when I see someone CV really nicely written and with like. You know, when he overemphasizes their achievements, you know, I, I tend to be- lean more on to um to uh, believe that their CV is is true rather than false, right? Um, and uh, my 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 worry is that um, what well, you know, what if I missed out on like hiring the next um like Mark Zuckerberg or or or, or the next superstar developer? So I'll always spend time to to um interview um we we try to interview every single candidate. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that I'm pretty, um, happy with spending time on, on, um, finding people, even, even if it means, you know, spending, wasting an extra 30 minutes. Right. Um, I, I think that that time is worth spending. Uh, I think what do you, what do you mention about, uh, kind of, you know, asking about the most difficult problem they solved, I think really well applies for, for engineers, do you have any specific or like similar questions that would apply to non-technical hires? Because a lot of a lot of people, hopefully in this chat as well, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people in this in this chat as well, they are non-technical and mm-hmm. they are looking for their way to uh, get into crypto full time, part time, or just find their first gig or project to contribute to. And there might not be might not be engineers, and that's yeah. honestly like probably number one question that yeah. i get asked on twitter on email <laughs> people get surprised that there are non-technical opportunities so yeah. please shed some light that it's not only about yeah. engineering <laughs> yeah yeah by by the way we we are um you know kind of a plug self plug here we we are currently looking for um ambassadors um and community ambassadors for strips and also you know we have non-technical roles open um for uh marketing side and uh you know design side we were always looking for talented people to to join us um and uh you know with regards to you know what type of question non-technical question that we like to ask um it's very simple for me i i just ask them what's most important to them right and i really try to drill drill down to um what drives them what motivates them um and uh you know i i i try not to um uh uh you know be uh, you know accept a surface level answer you know and and you know keep asking why um they they want to join crypto and and you know what is their motivating factor um and f- i think you know if if someone tells me um that money is important to them right I think that's that's a fair answer um and uh you know that's one of the drivers for a lot of people in crypto right um but the main thing the main thing for me is can this person be honest and upfront um because um when you're running um 
a small team, um, the most important thing is communication and trust, right? So if we can trust each other um, to, to do the best for strips, then it really makes things move a lot quicker. Um, and, uh, you know, I think when, when you don't have that trust, um, that's when things start to break down. Do you usually give like some test assignment to non-technical people? Uh, or how do you like even though mm-hmm. if someone shows their interest to work and they want to be in crypto, but they have zero previous crypto experience, mm-hmm. how do you usually test and suss that uh, yeah. they are, you know, natural degen in the making? <laughs> <laughs> natural degen in the making. Um, that's, uh, that's a tough one to test. Um, but, uh, you know, for, for example, uh, if it's a uh, um, department specific, uh, role like uh, marketing, um, we might ask the candidate to uh, write a uh, improvement proposal of how Strips can improve its marketing. So writing down the list of um, areas of improvement and and uh, you know putting together a presentation or, or proposal on on how uh, we could uh, improve our marketing strategy. For for design wise, it's uh, you know it's probably easier. Um, we can look at their portfolio of designs and then maybe ask them to uh, draw draw or design an example um, that you know that we can look at. Um, I, I think um, having having no experience in crypto is 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 uh, is not a uh, you know kind of a, um uh red flag for us i think it's more important to have curiosity um even if you know you you might not have you know aped into the latest yield farm but having a curious uh, and open mindset um is is very important to us yeah uh so far i've been recommending everyone uh, especially if they're non-technical to uh, just write, like write mm. a blog post, write an article, um, share your opinion, even if you're new, share your journey. Uh, I'm just trying to find more more tips that I can give out to people and recommend them, like how can they make their resume, their application stand out. Yeah. And Twitter used to be really good for information and, and really good for learning. But with this bull market, I think there's way more noise than signal. Um, you know, I think in like 2019, and 2020, uh, there were a, a lot of Twitter um, uh, OGs, sorry, not Twitter OG, crypto OGs that that were on Twitter that was just sharing a lot of alpha, right? And um, nowadays, I feel like uh, the the signal to noise ratio has really um, dropped uh, a lot because everyone's just kind of like, up, GM. you know, crypto up only, talk about prices, you know, all time high. <laughs> um gm gm yeah yeah like gm <laughs> um and, and i think it's it's probably more difficult to ship to, to to sift through the noise um today than it was a year ago so i can definitely feel um for the the newcomers um but there are some really great like um websites now uh that uh, and newsletters um that uh are good starting points and um uh, you know, there's a lot more tutorials today than there was, you know, say even a year ago. Um, and and like you mentioned in the beginning, there's a lot more companies that are hiring, right? So um, my my uh, suggestion, if, you know, you are someone new in, in crypto is to try to find a, a role um, in, in, a, in a established or in a um, crypto company, crypto native company, and just just take the leap of faith because um, the worst case is you learn a lot about crypto. Um, and the best scenario is, you know, you, you learn a lot and you get very wealthy along the way. Right. LOL. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a like controversial, slightly controversial question, I guess. Would you hire anons or have any anons approached you and how did you handle it? Mm. Um, interesting enough, we haven't had that many uh, anons uh, approach us, um, or we haven't interviewed that many anons. Um, 
and uh that that may be you know because uh you know we we haven't gone into uh uh size or, or popularity yet that you know we're attracting a non developers but let's make um, it a hypothetical question then yeah. how would you how would you you know you have a 100k followers mm -hmm. uh, 25 billion uh, AUM. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, TVL, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Both. I'll take um, both, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what do you, how would you, and you have like, you know, a thousand anons knocking on your DMs. Yeah. Um, how, what, what would be the process like? Uh, what would mm. you look at? It would be strict no, yes, maybe. I don't I, know. Yeah. I, I would say right now it's a maybe and, and I don't know because I, I don't want to say um, like, uh, you know we're not um uh, against the idea of having anonymous team members um and you know even even our own team is semi-anonymous right um uh, for for safety reasons um but uh you know we we feel like um there are a lot of well at least my personal view is there's more good people than than bad people in, in this world right and um i totally understand if someone wants to remain anonymous in, in crypto um, so I'm not I'm not against it. Um, we we probably have to uh, you know adjust our hiring process and uh, you know maybe the the employment contract or, or, or the legal side of things ha have to be adjusted. But um, yeah, I'm definitely open to it um, if if there's a right fit. Yeah, definitely. I think it's uh, this question will be popping up more 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 frequently. Um, yeah. but, um, I think there is, th this whole space is kind of built on anons or pseudonymous, mm. uh, founders and participants. So I think it's, uh, as the space scales, I think that problem will be, or like a challenge will be more and more pronounced. Um, yeah, I think like, um, one, one more personal, uh, like more or less personal question that I have, like as a founder, how do you find yourself? Like, was it hard scaling yourself or going through different phases? Mm -hmm. As the project scaled and the more money flew into the protocol and you know you yeah. launched the multiple dexes um yeah so that's a really great question i think as a founder you fluctuate between um uh absolute depression and uh and then on the other spectrum is uh you know uh narcissism right and i think most founders fall somewhere in between the spectrum and um I, I try to stay as grounded as possible by meditating um, every day. Um, and, um, you know, the the beginning was definitely very tough trying to uh, basically go from zero to one um, and, you know, take an idea and, and build a team around it. But um, I've always been very confident that um, this, uh, the idea of having an interest rate market is an inevitable. So, um, if we weren't going to do it, uh, someone else would, right? And for me, it's less important about who does it, and more important about um, we, you know, we help the acceleration of the transition from um, the the traditional finance infrastructure into into decentralized finance infrastructure. So, we, I'm I'm just happy that I can help accelerate that that trend in in whatever meaningful way that that we can and um you know i i have a pretty optimistic view of uh competition and i i welcome fair competition and um you know i i think that uh you know i a lot of projects don't like their investors investing in competing projects but um i'm i'm pretty neutral to that you know I, i've told our investors that um if they would like to invest in competing projects um you know I'm not going to, um, uh, you know, restrict them. And, and, you know, I, I think that's totally fair and, um, because it, it helps grow the pie, right. It helps accelerate the space. Um, the, the only caveat to that is that, um, you know, fair competition should be, should be fair. Right. And there shouldn't be any, um, un unfair practices that, um, uh, you know, that, that are, being done like um you know like scammy type of tactics um but yeah uh i, I think that um you know I, i've always had a pretty um holistic view and i'm pretty pretty open-minded about about that so um it, it never really worried me whether we were 
going to like um, uh, be successful because I think that this market is inevitable. So whether we succeed or, or someone else will, will succeed. Yeah, 100% agree with you, especially about what you said uh, in the beginning on the fa- founder mindset. Mm. Um, for me, it's been like, I mean, I used to be doing meditating, meditation as well, uh, but lately I just, you know, try to cycle or go to gym. And uh, yeah, the ups and downs are, the, the swings can be massive, especially in the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like <laughs> for me yesterday, we were relaunching on Product Hunt. Uh, we kind of launching crypto jobs as 3.0 on product hunt. And like, I think I submitted it, uh, or scheduled it for submission and it actually went live ahead of the time, which is like a, a terrible thing on product hunt. So I almost had a heart attack anyway, <laughs> uh, it all got fixed, but, um, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And comp- speaking about competition, uh, we definitely been also seeing quite a lot of job boards popping up in the space which is uh i will i I will say a little bit annoying to me personally i'm Mm -hmm. not gonna lie uh because everyone right away claims to be uh, you know greatest and uh best and number one (laughs) uh, which is uh i don't know uh maybe questionable in certain cases but um i I definitely kind of more than that i definitely subscribe to uh kind of it's it's more about biddling and like growing the space overall, growing the pie because it's it's a massive market and it's going to be bigger and bigger. Um, mm. Kind of my my motto is, you know, don't just huddle, biddle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not okay. only about, you know, your own bags or, you know, competition out there. It's yeah. it's not Web 2.0. It's, uh, it's much more collaborative yeah. uh, space where, especially when you're on, on, on chain, uh, on mainnet, all protocols build on top of each other. For sure. So, and um, I think the other thing about competition, which um, I, I like, is um, it it really helps you focus, right? And if, like like you said, if there's another uh, job sport that's popping up, it lights a fire under your ass, right? And <laughs> if, if if that competition didn't show up, you, you know, you might, maybe you might have not pushed for more products, more features. Um, and a more aggressive, uh, you know, product roadmap. But the fact that that competition existed means that you're you're um, focusing on yourself and and you know moving yourself forward at at a at a faster speed, right? And um, and it's probably the same thing for 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 the competitor as well. Um, so I, I think that. Ultimately, it's uh, it's beneficial for the space and beneficial for the end user, right? The end consumer. Um, but yeah, it sucks as a founder, right? It's sucks <laughs> as a founder to see uh, other competitors uh, trying to, uh, you know, budge into uh, your space. But um, I, I think, uh, you know, it. I, I view it as a as a motivator um, to be more focused. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think you know ultimately. The moat, um, you know, I, I always say that our moat is not our product. Our moat is our team and our processes, right? Because products come and go. But what makes you a sustainable winner um, is number one, your team, and number two, your processes, right? Because products can change, but if you have a good process, you will always come up on top, right? And if you have a good team, you will always come up on top. Um so, so I, again, going back to, you know, hiring, um, I spent a lot of my time thinking about um, our team and about our hiring and, and also ensuring that we hire the best people. Um, because uh, one, one notion that, that I have is uh, we want to have a high talent density, right? So we want, you know, we don't necessarily need to have a high qual- quantity of people, but we want to have high quality and high talent density. So once again, which roles are you hiring for and how do people apply? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we are um, currently hiring um, a senior Solidity developer. Um, and we also have roles open for um, uh, marketing. We have roles open for ambassador, community management. Um, and also if you're a graphics designer, uh, you know, feel free to drop us an email at jobs at strips.finance cool yeah i was i was planning to open up the uh the floor to questions because we have quite a lot of people here i have i see some familiar faces 
Chi Rob, he's also working on a crypto st- uh, company. Um, I think a lot of other people as well. So guys, don't be shy if you have a. Uh, questions or i mean maybe ming you have some more things to comment before we while people are deciding on their questions any other tips that you would give like general tips for people breaking into crypto or finding their job or hiring um you know just general tips number one have fun um you know don't don't take things too seriously i think crypto you know uh is a very open and collaborative space so don't don't be afraid to reach out and and ask for help um but uh yeah happy to answer any questions or just open the floor up to to discussion awesome thanks ming this was amazing um okay guys uh questions anyone raise raise your hand ask for uh, to be a speaker um No one yet. Is there is there a question that you wish I I asked you but I haven't? <laughs> um, you know, I think we, we we discussed a lot. Um, but can I ask you some questions? <laughs> uh sure, sure. We got uh, Dan next up, but go, go okay. ask me a question. Um, I added Dan to uh, to the speakers, but go ahead. Uh, no, I, I think let's uh, let's take a community question first. If, if we okay. have any time left over, I can ask you some questions. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, Dan, just gonna do not forget a question. Uh, Dan, uh, hello, Dan. Hello. Hello. Hello, guys. Hello, everyone. Okay, we can hear you. Okay, can you hear me? Um, I joined. I heard you guys um, talking a lot and um, speaking a lot. Yeah, so my question is this, yeah? You said you're trying, there's a lot of noise now in the space and uh, a lot of noise, you can't differentiate the noise from the real content on or the real alpha because we have a lot of people talking about price action. This is one of my questions. So how, how does one try to separate the noise from the real content, that's one. Um, two, yeah, you, you guys have been talking about jobs and hiring, yeah. Myself, I've been in crypto for a while, yeah, so I've just been learning, trying to get my hands dirty into new um, ventures and the rest, yeah. I own, I own um, um, Strips Token, yeah, Strips Finance, yeah on the telegram as well so uh i'm holding it i have it since i've been holding it i've been following up and everything going on so people looking to um people looking to um navigate or get into the crypto space yeah how what what will you see they should look out for for me i'm a civil engineer yeah so I'm trying to get into crypto full time. Now I just want to go through this whole process of the of the bull run and experience it fully, like get a full experience, then maybe apply for a job in crypto. So and also I want to stay ahead of the curve. Yeah. Like um I want to stay ahead of the curve by um getting to add some things to my C V so that when I get to apply for a job, my CV will be robust. Yeah, that's a question. Got it. Um, yeah, that's a great question. So on, on the first question about signal to noise uh, ratio and, and where to get the best, uh, you know, kind of information, I, I also struggle with that, um, uh, you know, recently because there's just a lot more um noise uh in in twitter uh but there are a few um good, really good um uh channels that i subscribe to on telegram like the daily ape um or like uh, unfolded that are really good places um to get your uh news summary um uh, you know away from the away from the noise um other other uh great um 
places for learning and information is uh, Real Vision, right? With uh, Raul Powell and um, he he does some really great podcasts. So I think those places are good to um, start off. And and uh, another really uh, under uh, appreciated source of alpha is Crypto Jobs List, right? Um, <laughs> I definitely, I definitely. Um, scroll through the uh, job listings of crypto jobs list at other companies and seeing which ones are like hiring for uh, marketing or like uh, engineers very aggressively and i know okay like this company is probably doing something uh serious and um and that's that that is uh, an unorthodox uh source of alpha um uh, and and your second question of how how to start uh, in this space is is a difficult question to um, answer in a general sense because everyone has a, you know their individual circumstances. But um, uh, if you have decided that crypto is here to stay and that you want to move the space forward and and you want to be a part of this. Um, I, I I can say that it's it's uh, not a decision to be taken lightly because, um, unfortunately, if you do join crypto, uh, it's very hard to leave, and um, if you join crypto uh, from a you know traditional um, uh, job, um, then it's harder it it's hard to put that on your CV. If it doesn't work out, and you want to, you want to go back to uh, your your previous um, uh, sector or industry. So that's unfortunately like one of the um, drawbacks. Um, but if if you believe in, in crypto as a long term trend, um, then I would say you know start small, like like Raman mentioned. Um, you know, start small and just write blogs or just uh, write your thoughts um, and, and share it to, to Twitter, to, to um, Medium, and uh, be active in communities of projects that you are passionate about. Um, number one, you'll learn a lot. And number two, you'll probably get um, you know, wealthier in, in the process because there is still so much opportunity that's untapped in the space, right? Um, so I, I would... You know, I would start small, um, and then if you once you feel more confident, um, then uh, you know look for roles in in crypto um, that that um, you know are interesting to you. And there's no no shortage of um, that. Yeah, there's no shortage of uh, open roles. Uh, you know that 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 are on crypto jobs list. I can assure you of that. <laughs> I subscribe to that as well, especially as crypto jobs as being the source of alpha. I've definitely found myself multiple times in a situation where I see some coin mooning and I look at it and I'm like, this looks familiar. And then I realized that they uh, was they were hiring like a few months ago or like a year ago. I think definitely the same thing happened with the graph protocol <laughs> earlier this year when they went to $3. And I remember they were posting jobs like in twenty. 18 and 19 uh, on CGL and I was like missed out <laughs> well I didn't miss out completely but anyway it's, it's definitely a, a good alpha source I would also recommend uh, following some like small cap uh, Twitter accounts it's a bit hard to find them because usually you know Twitter accounts with fewer followers they tweet kind of high high signal I find way too many uh, high profile Twitter profiles um, they just tweet populistic content, which I, I personally getting tired of. Uh, yeah, like yeah, people are like <laughs> ETH is money, and I'm like, cool. Uh, I've heard this, you know, a thousand times, <laughs> or some other like obvious yeah. thing that is just very easy retweetable, and people will be like, yay. But it's a uh, you know, what's annoying definitely... is the the people that used to share a lot of really high quality alpha. Are now just like posting random stuff and uh, you know posting populist stuff that now I have to like uh, validate whether I want to keep following this person or not because you know you don't want to unfollow because what if one day they they drop some alpha <laughs> on uh, you know on Twitter with like a 
20, 20 tweet thread, you know. Um, but yeah, it's definitely annoying. Um, but uh, I think that's that's you know part of the bull market. Um, and uh, uh, you know, it's 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 uh, it, it's both good and bad, right? It means that we are really in a bull market. Right. Cool. I think we answered both of the questions. Next up, Danny. Uh, yeah, you guys can hear yes. me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just uh, about strip finance. Um, so, what are prob- probably you guys already uh, answered this? I just joined you, so I'm sorry for if you already answered. I just want to know what's the what's the problem? Are you trying to solve? That's one. Uh, two. Uh, do you have any other like similar like, competitors in the in the space? Three. Are uh, uh, how do you differentiate yourself among uh, other uh, crypto networks? Thank you. Uh, yeah, sure. Th- thanks for the question. So um, for strips, uh, the problem that you know we we saw uh, in in DeFi was that uh, you know you have all, a lot of these um, uh, volatile interest rates um, that that are in lending protocols, borrowing protocols, and and also for for example the funding rates on um, uh, derivatives, right, is is constantly fluctuating, and so there there wasn't any fixed rate protocol that um, offered a capital efficient manner of locking in and and uh, uh, hedging your your interest rates, and and secondly is um, in traditional finance interest rate derivatives market and interest rate trading is a four hundred trillion dollar business. Um, if you look at the derivatives volume in the world, 80% is actually interest rate derivatives. The remaining 20% is a makeup is made up of uh, FX and, and equities, right? So if you think about Bitcoin or uh, Ethereum as you know uh, stock market or, or FX, then you take the volume that's being traded in the derivatives market. Um, and you multiply that by five, right? And that's kind of the the the, the size of what interest rate markets could be. Um, and and so what what strips uh, built is a way for traders to easily uh, speculate and hedge interest rates as an individual asset class, right? So we we view um, interest rates as a um, as as a price of uh, money, right? The the price of future money and and uh, future cash flows, and so that should be a tradable instrument by in and of itself, right? Um, and then uh, th- you know what what competitors are there? Um, as far as we can see, um, there are a few fixed rate protocols in the market that try to use a token based approach um but we find that it's not very efficient and not very um effective uh of of way of trading interest rates right and so we uh took the approach of using derivatives rather than using a token uh backed model um of of trading interest rate and so as far as we can see um there aren't any other competitors that are taking this approach and there, there is a very clear reason why and the, the reason is that because it's really difficult um and uh that there was we know of one protocol that was um uh going down the same path um and uh you know uh raising capital for uh an interest rate derivatives exchange um like us but um i think a couple of months uh later they actually decided to pivot and um uh, you know, my my guess is that they felt it was too difficult um, to to build this, and so um, I think um, you know that's that's the nature of the problem, right? And um, unfortunately, we we took the more difficult path, but we feel like it is the right path. Um, and uh, you know, I, I think I you know I mentioned a little bit about our differentiating factor, but um, other. Other differentiating factors of, of strips is, for example, for our AMM, um, it's extremely capital efficient. And also we are the first protocol to use LP tokens as collateral for derivatives um, and, and as collateral for the AMM. So 
um, I think that in itself is a uh, is a pretty pretty awesome feature. Uh, I gotta admit, um, that took us a very long time to to figure out and and to build and test. So, I hope that answers your questions. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I just just one more follow up question. You mentioned it's difficult for the other teams. Um, do, do you mind to share why is it so difficult? Um, yeah. So when you think about building an exchange, um, you know, if you build a physical spot exchange like you know Binance, um, where you're just exchanging Bitcoin for US dollars, it's pretty straightforward, right? You have asset A, and asset B, um, and then you're just you're just changing. Um, hands of asset A and asset B, right? Um, and uh, you know you can use Uniswap, you can use SushiSwap, and um, you know that's that's pretty straightforward. But when you get into the realm of derivatives, um, it, it complicates things, uh, you know, by uh, a few uh, you know degrees, right? And number one is um, how do you how do you calculate the PNL of a interest rate derivative contract? That's number one. Number two is how do you calculate margin and risk, right? Um, because for derivatives, we um, offer up to 10 times leverage. So unlike the case where you have someone that agrees to buy a Bitcoin for $63,000 and you hand over your Bitcoin and then, and then walk away with $63,000, with derivatives, um, with leverage, I might only give you, for that one Bitcoin, I might only give you $6,000. Right, but then I, I, I'll, t I'll tell you, I'll promise to pay back the remaining amount. Um, or, uh, you know, if the price of Bitcoin drops, you can take the six thousand dollars and, you know, um, and and the Bitcoin back. Right. Um, so like these type of um mechanisms uh need to be uh figured out and need to be built in place. And from from a financial engineering standpoint. It's very difficult for um, interest rates because number one, no one's ever done it before in, in DeFi. And number two, even in traditional finance, there is no clear model for the valuation of, of interest rate swaps, right? Um, we, you know, we have a couple of thousand page book on fixed income that, you know, we, we've we read and, and gone through. And um, there are model for approximating the price, but there is no closed form solution for uh, calculating the price of an interest swap, unlike options, which has black shoals, right? Um, so, you know, on the financial engineering point, it's it's difficult. And then on the technical point, it's it's even more difficult as well because um, you have you have an asset that is not physical, right? Interest rate, um, it's it's not a physical asset. Um, and and so, you know, how do you how do you manage that? How do you uh, trade that? How do you settle the PNL? How do you settle collateral and margin and liquidation? So there's there's a lot of degrees of complexity um, that that is is uh, added on top. But um, we feel like that was um, the right direction because ultimately um, it, it it's not going to matter if you take the easy road, um, but the no one wants to use the product, right? Um, so, yeah, I hope that <laughs> I hope that answers your your question. No, uh, re really, thank you. I like it. Uh, just one last question, if you don't mind. Uh, where are you guys? If you don't mind sharing, where are you guys based uh, off on the internet? On the internet, or I'm sorry. I mean, outside the US or inside the US? It's just you know. oh, okay. Um, no, we're we're outside of the US. Yeah, so. Uh, okay, if there's cool. any feds here, we are definitely outside the U.S. and we are not a U.S. company. <laughs> okay, okay, cool, cool. Well, thank you so thanks, much. Danny. Okay, thank uh, you. That was the most amount of alpha I've heard on Twitter this week. <laughs> <laughs> Going thanks, back to the thanks. previous question, where to find alpha? Here it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, we had uh, Umair and then Solani and then Sveta and then Rafael. I think in that order. Uh, Danny, I'll, I'll going to demote you for now. Uh, so we give space to other people. Thanks so much again. All right. Sure. Hey, good morning, guys. Um, just want to say thank you for doing this. It's this type of like collaboration and, uh, you know, just like down to earth vibes that is really motivating and inspiring in this space. Um, so thanks for that. Um, my question though, you know, my journey, like through the job search process, um, was kind of demoralizing, honestly, with not having much experience in crypto. Um, so I found myself now in a couple of DAOs. 
um, which has actually been really positive experience. So um, I just want to hear your take on, you know, your personal opinion on the potential there to move into a career from joining DAOs, as well as like balancing the whole um, investing in crypto while, you know, trying to pursue a career. Because obviously, um, I think most of us in this space are committed to the fact that crypto might be one of the best uh, investment opportunities of our lives. So just kind of a two-folded question there, um, and I'd love to hear your uh, opinion on it, please. Yeah, thanks for, for that question. I think it's it's awesome that, you know, you're um, starting out and dabbling in DAOs because um, I think DAOs are also one of the really great places to, to learn and uh, share alpha. Um, and, you know, like you mentioned, it, crypto, I, I, I feel, is one of the best uh, investment opportunities of, of our generation. Um, and if, if you're already, you know, part of a couple of DAOs, I think you're, you know, uh, few steps ahead um and uh if if you want to um transition to like a full-time um role in, in a in a crypto company i think starting off with the DAOs is is a, a great place and then um you know just uh messaging uh people on uh twitter or just uh applying for roles on uh CJL um, crypto jobs list is is you know one of the best ways uh, to get noticed um, and I think people like um, uh, to 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 work with authentic uh, people um, that genuinely want to want to help and um, you know I, I think a lot that there's like this trend uh, on Twitter of like uh, project interns right like sushi intern like cms intern and um it, it it probably won't pay very well but that's also another another road um or another path of uh, you know getting more involved and i, I can tell you that a, a lot of these interns um don't get paid a lot but they get magnitudes more back um just from the alpha that 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 they're exposed to right and so i, I think um not only is it important for founders uh, to find uh, the right people, but it's also important for um, the the uh, people joining the companies to do due do, 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 do diligence on their on their founders, on the project team, and make sure that you are joining a project that is in it for the long term, um, and uh, and and that you can learn a lot from. Okay, yeah, sure. That sounds um, like there's a lot of potential there, like you said, from being an intern. Um, how about in terms of uh, investing, like while, you know, trying to be involved with uh, these different companies? Um, yeah, so if you are um, part of a, a DAO or part of a project um, early on, I would I would ask for, um, and, and this is not financial advice, by the way, uh, but I, I would um, align uh myself with the project by uh either asking for um a way to invest in in, in the token um at, at the team level or um have your uh uh comp package um be tied to the token in, in some manner or have some performance based uh bonus i think um you you would be doing yourself a favor and, and also doing the company a favor by aligning your um performance with with the company's token or, or you know with with, the, with how well the company does as well um so this is kind of more on the individual negotiation level um and again it, it differs case by case um but uh yeah i i would say you know in investing wise um try to um have high conviction on uh of a relatively small number of projects, right? So, um, I, the worst, the biggest mistake I, I see a lot of uh, investors make in in crypto is like kind of like the spray and pray method, right? Um, of you know investing small amounts into uh, really low cap um, uh, coins, hoping that one of them will will hundred x, um, which um, is kind of like buying the lottery. Um, if if you you know, rather, 
if you are very familiar with a project um, and are very involved um, with, with the team and um, have very high confidence in it, I would say, um, uh, you know, bet big on 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 that project. Um, and, uh, you know, because why is because if you're involved directly, you have an information advantage over others, right? So you should try to exploit that edge as much as you can. Um, whereas if you're just going on CoinGecko and then looking at trending coins, like you have, you have zero edge um, versus other people. So if you already have an edge, the optimal way is to maximize that edge by betting big, right? Um, again, not financial advice. <laughs> Yeah. No, absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. So thanks again. Not a financial advice from my end as well, uh, but I would definitely agree in terms of, especially when you interact with the project, you kind of know whether you like the people or not. And I think just just having, a, you know, just knowing that the project is run by good people and honest people that don't have ulterior motives is a huge, it's going to show up in the token price sooner or later. Uh, it might not be, you know, in next week, and next month, maybe not even next year, but sooner or later it will like it will the market will kind of reward that project i mean look at ens uh, i think ens yeah. for the longest period of time was the most under under hyped nft and that's what ens is it's a erc721 and it's been around since 2016 as far as i remember and mm. you know of course like in in this bull market a lot of people use that as like a show of their um, kind of status that they're eth supporters but uh, in the end of the day, you know, outside of just having a fancy or expensive Twitter handles, what what matters there is like it's a it's a it's a naming system and uh, it's like DNS. But I think it will be even more impactful than than DNS. And uh, if you understand the kind of utility of that, and uh, you kind of start interacting with it, and again, ENS didn't have any tokens <laughs> up until uh, a yeah. week ago <laughs> or a few days ago. But uh, like the size of the airdrop is just you know it, it's kind of it's probably one of the biggest ones in uh, especially if you owned ENS for quite some time. Um, yeah, and and, and I'll also uh, just uh, sorry, yeah, I'll, I'll just add one more point here that um, what has really helped me uh, with investing is actually not any of the investing books um, that that I've read or any of the technical analysis like jargon and, and, and tutorial on the internet. What has really helped me is actually reading about the history of finance, reading about the history and evolution of finance, why certain things were invented the way that they were, why certain things, why the banks are structured the way they are, um, or why is there even a Federal Reserve, right? I think people don't realize that the Federal Reserve is a relatively new phenomenon that is, has been around for less than 100 years. So in the entire record of, you know, I think finance has been around for, you know, thousands of years, right? Um, and like the, the the idea of currency has been around for, I don't know, like maybe four or 500 years. Um, but the Federal Reserve, the idea of a central bank has only been around for less than 100 years, right? Um, and And even like the idea of the European Union has only been around for a couple of decades, right? Um, so understanding why these things were formed um, is is uh, super insightful because history doesn't repeat, but it does rhyme, right? So there are similarities that you can, that you can draw. And then on the um, like NFT side, um, I, I personally feel like, um, you know, I, I've been, uh, you know, sleeping on NFTs a little bit, but... Um, that that is more uh of a uh, like culture like how do you capture the the culture of uh of people right um and uh i think uh you know understanding about community and and and, and things around that is is also uh good to capture like and, and find the next uh nft investment um but yeah for sure the the understanding of like the history of finance has helped me a ton um, in, in finding like what the future of DeFi is going to look like. And um, and that's why I'm very confident in, in strips because I, I know that as finance evolved, 
there was a need to create an interest rate market and there was a need to have fixed interest rates right and and so i'm i'm not at all concerned about um the the future of strips because if we just look at history books right um we we understand the underlying driver of uh interest rates and and so we just position ourselves to to be there so um that's the that's the other advice i would give yeah read history books <laughs> all right um how much time do you have by the way um i i uh, open up this uh the rest of the evening so oh, wow. we can keep going that's very generous of you awesome okay uh we who was next uh, thanks, Sumair. Um, hope I'm not butchering your name. Um, all right, uh, let's go to Sveta. Hi, uh, Shweta, this side. Uh, great advice, by the way, about reading the history of finance. I'm definitely going to go through it with it. Uh, and I see a lot of potential in the project, of course, and I see that it's get, going to get popular with time. And as it gets, as strips gets more popular and more decentralized with time, where do you see, uh, you know, strips in the world of crypto afterwards in the future where how far does your vision go with strips um so our, our vision ultimately is to disrupt the whole traditional financial system of uh interest rates trading so interest rates um is a 400 trillion dollar market in traditional finance it is extremely inefficient it is traded across otc desks in a um peer-to-peer matter via Bloomberg chat groups and telephones. So traders literally still get on the phone and say, hey, I want to buy $10 billion of interest rate swaps. Um, and then someone on the other hand will probably write it down on a piece of paper, um, send it through an email and say, confirm that you are buying $10 million of US uh, interest rate swaps at XYZ price. And then the other person writes back. So the email says, I confirm. And then that gets sent to the middle office and then the back office. And they they record that into their Excel spreadsheet, right? Um, and then at the end of the month, they say, hey, you owe me $500 million because this position went up. And then and then the other guy, let's say like Barclays, will say, uh, actually, we disagree. We think we only owe you $400 million. And then they get on a conference call. They argue a little bit and say, okay, we'll settle at $450 million. And so this is typically how the traditional finance trades interest rates, which is really, really hilarious um, when you think about how much money is uh, exchanging hands, right? We're talking about over $6 trillion of trading volume every day. Uh, exchanging hands in interest rates um, that's being done through this method. So it was a no-brainer for us that um, this would ultimately have to change. Um, and we have this tool called blockchain that offers instantaneous settlement, instantaneous price discovery. Um, and um, this basically is multiple orders of magnitude better than the existing system, right? It's it's a it's a joke that we make um, in in traditional finance that the whole r- world runs on Excel. Um, it's but it's got a grain of truth in it, right? Because basically the whole of uh, financials e- the financial system, you know, with trillions of dollars of trading is is being done through Excel, right? And so blockchain is is like a multiple uh, better version of uh, an Excel, right? Basically, you have this database that is immutable um that people can't rewrite and and change the rules um and and so it it, it seemed like a very clear cut uh case for us that okay the existing technology in traditional finance is decades old right um and it introduces a lot of risk and inefficiency so ultimately what is what is going to be the um end goal right what is going to be the next evolution of finance right and it was very clear to us that it was going to be in DeFi, and and within DeFi, um what is the most um uh you know under um explored space right and with the most upside potential uh, and the biggest market and interest rate was was the very clear answer
Right. Um, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot. That uh, answers my question. Yeah, no problem. Cool. Thanks, Fred. Shara. Shara. Um, Raphael is up next. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me well? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, I'm a fresh new bridge in, uh, in computer science, and I worked a little bit uh, during my thesis on crypto uh, web. Um, and my, my question is related to your uh, uh, hiring situation and the uh, hiring situation of the crypto world mm -hmm. in general. Um, I saw that there are many, many positions for a senior uh, developer, a mid developer, but really few uh, in junior positions. So I was wondering, my question is actually, do you really find a um, senior developer uh, for crypto world? Um, or is it just you have a lot of money to spend and you, you can afford a senior developer? So, uh, yeah, this is related yeah, to that. Yeah, um, that's, that's a, a good question. So I think senior developer with, um, like people say, oh, we want to hire a really experienced uh, developer. It's kind of like a misnomer because if you think about smart contracts, it's only been around, um, I, I don't know the exact uh, year is it 2015 or 20, 2016? Um, um, 2014, technically, 2015, was the Ethereum, right. and then 16 was kind of getting more popular. Still very yeah. niche, though. Yeah, so like 2016, let's just say, um, you know, Ethereum smart contracts goes goes live. Um, so really, you've only had five years of of this existing, um, and and so. It's really difficult to find someone with more than, say, two two years or even three years of experience, um, because that person needs to be really, really, uh, like early um, on the crypto wave. Um, and um, you know, I, I would say anyone with more than one year of experience, um, I would I would classify them as uh, pretty experienced. Um, and anyone with two years is like very experienced, right? Um, and, and that's just kind of the nature of things because, uh, you know, of, of how young the industry is. Right. And so I, I wouldn't worry too much, um, about, uh, you know, whether, um, you, you have enough experience for, for the role. I would just say, you know, just go for it and, and try. And even for us, um, uh, we don't uh necessarily discriminate against someone who has no crypto experience um in fact we we just hired uh someone um that that has only uh three months of crypto experience uh into a senior uh developer role um because he showed he he had um you know uh, more than a decade of software engineering experience so he already knew about very good software design patterns uh how, how to structure code properly, how to do testing, um, you know, how to do security. And, and so uh, that I feel is a lot more important than under, understanding like how to write Solidity code. Um, and if you can display that, I think um, there will be a lot of companies that, that, that would, um, you know, uh, hire uh, that type of a developer. But um you know, again, I, I think, you know, a caveat here is that it depends, again, on who you're speaking to, because if you're speaking to a HR person, they might only just like look at the surface level stuff and, you know, um, not really uh, think much about the rest of your non-crypto experience. Um, but if you're speaking directly with a founder or with like the head of engineering, uh, most likely if you already have experience with engineering in, in other fields and uh, you, you, you are a proven problem solver, um, you know, I, I think that um, uh, hiring managers sh should be pretty open to it. At least we are very open to it. Um, and then the other thing is, if you are, are someone with uh, less um, work experience, like, you know, less than two years or, or just, you know, fresh out of college, um, a really good place to start is actually with trading firms, right? Because trading firms have uh, a need to hire developers both senior and junior uh, for both crypto and non-crypto uh, tasks, right? So um, that's a great way to, to start. And um, 
I, I, I think there are probably less trading firms that are uh, on uh, CJL than uh, than like uh, traditional projects. Um, but um, you know, I, I, I would also take a look at uh, trading firms and, and hedge funds. Um, you know, for for uh, junior developer roles as well. Yeah, there are quite a few funds and exchanges themselves that are hiring and also hiring through through CGL as well. So um, do go on a site, check out, subscribe to the newsletter so you don't miss out um, whenever the next uh, trading firm or exchange you're going to be hiring. Yeah, th- there you go. Hey, thank you. I already did that, so that's, uh, thank you. Cool. Thanks for the question. All right. Uh, next up is Rooney, as far as I remember. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man. Get, get to have you again. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah. Thanks for this opportunity, Raman. Um, my, my question is about something very interesting, in my opinion. Um, I am a growth hacker, and here in my agency, we collaborate with some startups in this crypto world here in Brazil and outside the yeah. Brazil. Anyway, uh, my question is, what is your perspective on the need of for crypto companies to grow with more with quality in line with the business's ideal customer profile? And uh, other question is, and what do you think about the importance of the growth marketer uh, in the in the third generation web companies, basically that. <laughs> um, yeah, I you know, I think that for for any type of crypto project, the community is is always very important. Um, and uh, you know, we see varying levels of quality. Um, you know, of uh, community uh, members and and community managers. Um, for us, um, we are, uh, you know, probably a little bit more um, on the uh, sophisticated level side um, in terms of, um, you know, product. Um, so the type of people that um, uh, join our community um, are, you know, we, we, we have a relatively uh, tight knit community and uh, the, the numbers of uh, community members might not be as as high as like uh some of the like for example like game fi type of projects but um ultimately uh we are here to uh you know to serve the community and um i think one of the superpowers of uh of projects is to have the ability for um community members to 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 be part of something bigger right and that's the type of vision and and um and uh, 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 vibe uh, that that we want to drive to our community is you know you can be part of something bigger, right? And um, I think that's a very empowering feeling and uh, and very powerful idea. So yeah, community is definitely a, a very important uh, aspect for us. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much. Um, I have all, one uh, other question, <laughs> more fast. Uh, what do you think about the experimentation mindset in these companies of crypto and Web3? Um, yeah, so like uh, in, in Web2, there's a saying of like, move fast, break things, right? Um, I, I, I think it's uh, a little bit more difficult to say that in, in uh, Web3 because when you break things, like people lose money, <laughs> a lot of money, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so... Uh, we 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 have this thing of uh, you know move fast, uh, test a lot, and uh, don't break things. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, so yeah we, perfect. We, yeah, so we we have um, built. We spent a lot of time building a really robust testing infrastructure. You know, our our integration uh, and uh, our integration test is uh, run through a hundred and five different tests. Right, um, so. Uh, it's an automated test that every time we we push a new build, it will run right. Um, and then obviously we have auditors that that um, you know uh, audit all, all of our new code that we publish. Um, 
but uh you know audit auditors are also a little bit of a hit and miss um you know that's kind of another story uh but yeah we 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 have built a really robust testing infrastructure such that we can that allows us the scaffolding um or the safety net to move fast right because without that safety net mm -hmm. we wouldn't be confident to move fast right because we wouldn't know if our code is safe so having had that time to you know build things correctly and set things up correctly um you know allows us to to, to move quickly so that's also one of the really um cool uh things that that i feel our, our team has done yeah yeah okay thanks for the answer thanks yeah, for, for, for the question uh all right who was next um run ranjan i believe Hi, uh, my question is in crypto industry, which coding language you think have more job opportunity? Even Strip also badly looking into that person who have that skills. Good question. Yeah, I think um, yeah, Roman can probably uh, you know provide more data points on that uh, and run some numbers. But for for us, we we write um, our our smart contracts in Solidity. Um, I think that Solidity has probably the um most uh uh i mean it's probably easiest to find um a, a role through solidity just by the sheer number of companies that that are on ethereum and, or on some evm chain um but yeah roman you want to share some uh insight into that yeah definitely uh so yeah um for blockchain development itself uh, solidity is definitely the number one language that is in highest demand and by the way, it looks right now like every other chain is adopting EVM, which is Ethereum Virtual Machine. And that means that you can run um, kind of a Solidity code that will compile into EVM bytecode. Uh, the other language is, is Viper, but uh, I think Viper is, I think like 5% of all contracts that are deployed on, on Ethereum mainnet are written in Viper. So it's not necessarily the most popular, but you know, it exists, you need to be aware. Of, uh, of its existence um, if you're applying to jobs, uh, but you don't necessarily have to code it. Uh, so yeah, Solidity is definitely like number one. Um, I'd say uh, you cannot go very far in modern kind of development world without knowing JavaScript and TypeScript. Um, and uh, I think a lot of kind of the real, J JavaScript is like number one language by popularity in the world. There is some, 10 or 20, 30 million uh, developers worldwide that write JavaScript and more and more people are starting to write TypeScript. And I think in crypto, especially, um, you better off starting projects with uh, TypeScript instead of migrating from JavaScript to TypeScript. Uh, because, well, first of all, Solidity itself and majority of other blockchains, they are uh, strictly typed um, systems. So they, they well, all the languages are strictly, strictly typed uh, so, um, having or using TypeScript, um, in addition, uh, to, to Solidity, uh, will going to be a huge plus for you. So like you will understand which, uh, you know, attributes or functions, uh, of your Solidity contract, uh, kind of accept which variables, what are the types of those variables. And, uh, I think fortunately I, I was kind of surprised myself as well, uh, the quality of tooling, developer tooling these days is pretty is pretty good. Um, I'd say if you're just getting started and you're primarily shipping on on uh, on Ethereum or on any other like EVM compatible chain like a BSC Avalanche, uh, what else is there uh, that is EVM compatible? Um, uh, I think Phantom is an EVM compatible. Uh, a bunch of others. Uh, you would have to work with with Solidity and with tooling like Truffle or Hard Hat. And uh, there's a lot of a lot of SDKs that are written in TypeScript. Um, if you want to be developing in crypto and not necessarily, and you can, you're kind of doing something more advanced if you're working on consensus mechanisms, you will probably be writing like nodes. Uh, and uh, I'd say the most, program the most popular languages would be uh, Go and Rust. Um, so majority, like, Pretty much Ethereum itself, uh, their main clients written in Rust. So there is uh, uh, Parity, uh, Parity Ethereum node, 
uh, nodes that are written in Rust, and the Geth. Uh, I think Geth is like the most popular uh, Ethereum client. It is written in Go, uh, unless something changed. <laughs> um, yeah, um, if there are any like Solana proponents, uh, as far as I remember, Solana smart contracts are written in Rust. So Rust is getting and gaining more and more popularity. Um, and Rust is gaining a lot of popularity in just general web development. Uh, I believe for Next.js in, uh, in their latest launch, they introduced like Rust compiler just for the purpose of speed of compilation. Um, so yeah, I uh, hope that answers the question. So yeah, basically TLDR, learn Solidity, learn uh, TypeScript. Uh, those two will uh, take you places. Thanks. Thank you so much. It's a lot of information and it will help me out. Thank you so much. Again. Sure. Just start coding. Uh, you know, I think even forking some uh, project and running them mm -hmm. locally is, uh, is a great exercise. I just find something mm -hmm. that it, you find interesting, whether it's, uh, you know, ERC20 contracts or, or NFT contracts, uh, you will, and like, you know, just start experimenting or like look into existing projects that are deployed on chain, try to understand what 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 the contract does uh, and how it operates and just experiment with it. Is it good to uh, use a local host instead of, uh, can we use a cloud server or something like that? Uh, for what specifically? Uh, specifically to run any, uh, any crypto related platforms. Right. So, I mean, local host is something you use locally. Um, a cloud is when you deploy something to production or if you have a staging environment. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Sure. Thanks That's so much it. for the question. <laughs> All right. Um, who was next? And by the way, before, before, we, before we proceed to the next person, uh, how much time do you think uh, we still have left? 20, 30 minutes? It's been yeah, almost two I, hours. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I think um, next 20 minutes should be fine. Yeah, cool. And I'm still waiting. I'm still looking forward to your question that, that you had to ask me. <laughs> I, at this stage, I've already forgotten about it. <laughs> oh, my God. I told you to write yeah. it down, sir. No, uh, it's, it's all okay. good. It's all good. Okay, okay. Uh, who was next? Did we, did we, I have a feeling we, oh, sorry, Deji, Mr. Deji, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks for having me. At uh, simply Deji is fine because I noticed you introduced me as Mr. Deji. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> I, I'm I'm really glad to be here to uh, listen to all the discussion. I, I just wanted to quickly get some insights from uh, our people from Script. Uh, I think recently there's been this narrative of DeFi 1.0 and DeFi 2.0. So I, I want to know um, Script's. Um, um, problems that you intend to solve is it aligning more to defy 1.0 or is it aligning more to defy 2.0 uh if you understand what i mean then secondly um let if if you tend to be more of a defy 2.0 uh project uh because i know that defy 2.0 is more about composability and all that and collaboration so which other projects um do you think uh, or do you currently collaborate with uh, in achieving a, a common goal? So those are the two uh, main questions I have. Uh, the third one is to also find out if there are any um, non-technical, um, uh, take for example, business development, uh, marketing, research, um, job opportunities are available at, at um, Scripps Finance. Thank you very much. Yeah, th thanks for the question. Um, so uh I, I think uh where we position ourselves uh, is definitely in uh the DeFi 2.0 um category because uh we are building um derivatives uh and, and, and products on top of the existing infrastructure that uh exists in, in DeFi 1.0. So uh without DeFi 1.0 um infrastructure like Aave, Compound, um you know, these these lending protocols that um, allow people to borrow and lend, um, then there wouldn't be a need to have an interest rate market, right? So we, we are definitely building um, on top of uh, that foundation and, and, you know, we are a derivative of that. So, you know, I would classify strips as, uh, you know, very clearly in the DeFi 2.0 camp. Um, and 
uh, on on our hiring, you know, we um, are uh, you know looking for community managers and, and ambassadors. Uh, right now, most of the business development is uh, being handled by myself, um, and uh, you know, we have been uh, also discussing uh, partnerships with uh, DeFi lending protocols um, because given that we are uh, built on top of uh, the foundation of DeFi 1.0, um, it makes a lot of sense for, you know, for us to um, integrate with them or, or for them to integrate with us. And, um, you know, in, in addition to DeFi protocols, we also uh, have discussions with a lot of um, uh, CeFi lending desks and uh, lending companies um, in, in the space that have billions of dollars of uh, AUM. So, um, you know, that's definitely something that that we have been actively um, pursuing, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. I've got a quick question for Daji, uh, by the way. So don't, don't leave the mic by the, uh, for, for now. Uh, as far as I understand, you're from Lagos, right? From, from Nigeria. I'm very curious what's going on there in terms of uh, kind of you know tech scene and crypto scene we do see a lot of people from nigeria kind of applying to jobs uh, but sometimes they also like complete the quality is very variable sometimes people like red sometimes um the talent is a bit too spammy um what can you like tell us about nigeria and the crypto scene there and tech scene and talent in five minutes <laughs> Oh, that's a that's a huge one. All right, uh, of course, Nigeria is uh, is um, the largest uh, black race uh, in the world and has a high um, number of youth. So you can expect that there is going to be a lot of talents in the country. So we, and a lot of the youths, um, some of them are self taught. Some of them have gone through uh, formal education to, especially in tech and and. Um, nascent technology so you find a lot of nigerian young people who are developers who are and you've had companies like um there are quite a number of them now that have helped in um, grooming a lot of developers over the years uh, and Dela is one of them that's groomed over ten thousand or more uh, nigerian developers so uh, and also in the crypto space a lot of young nigerians are very very informed about all that is going on in crypto they participate actively and even though we have a lot of uh, government restrictions people find ways to circumvent um, those restrictions to, part to participate in the crypto space uh, even nigerians are coming up with their own projects now so um, don't be surprised that you might encounter a few projects here and there that are initiated completely by nigerians so um, it's really bubbling of course i won't say that. Um, the quality is top notch. Is high. Is is high, but not. Uh, we're still learning. We're still uh, pulling ourselves by the bootstraps. That's that's it. In five minutes. Awesome. Thanks so much for uh, for these insights. I'm definitely very interested to like probably learn more. Maybe we'll we'll create like a Nigeria dedicated <laughs> room at some point. Uh, I think the interesting thing, like in in the West, uh, I think there was this uh, kind of uh, notion that you know Nigerian prints letters and a lot of scams that are coming from the country, but I'm pretty sure uh, you know every single country has a lot of great talent, uh, no matter no matter what the stereotypes say. So I'm just very curious to reach out and connect with more kind of legitimate and you know high quality uh, talent in Nigeria and like learn more about the leading projects and the leading kind of maybe universities even in in the country. Oh yeah, yeah. Twitter is a lot of um, it's a good place to find out a lot about. Um, quality nigerian talents linkedin is also mm -hmm. a good place to find them uh, of course those those emails don't come from nigerians alone some people impersonate as nigerians to claim that they are a nigerian prince somewhere and all that <laughs> and all that so just everyone has to be careful of of, uh, of uh, scammers all over the world this is, is we all know that uh, but if you are able to um uh process the signal from the noise you find a lot of high quality nigerian talents Hmm. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much for this insight. Uh, I Thank think uh, we're going to be wrapping up. Um, I'm still hoping to get this, you know, great question from from Ming <laughs> that he had. If he if he still remember. Um, 
maybe next time <laughs> sure, yeah sure. I, I can't i can't remember what uh my my original question was okay. but, um, it's right. yeah, maybe uh, it, shall it, we it shall we get one more time. question from the audience we have like one last uh yeah let's do it oh, sh- right sure let's do let's go all right Hello, sir. Please introduce yourself. Sankar, Sankara. Hi. Guys, can you hear yep. me? Yep. Uh, thank you. I, to be frank, I'm very new to the crypto, and this is my first call. But still, I participated in the uh, Strips uh, Finance IDO in the couple of months back. But it's uh, fine. Uh, maybe I thought that it's a new concept. I encouraged to the team to how they're going to take up into the next level. That's fine. But uh, suddenly, it's maybe I, I don't know whether I can ask this question or not. Uh, suddenly, day before yesterday or something I seen in the market, there is a one more company. It's called Strip Finance. is going to list down in the crypto market. How you guys can manage it, this type of uh, similar names, how it's going to affect you guys on that? Can you brief us on that, please? Uh, do, do you mean uh, competitors uh, in, in the market? I don't know exactly it's a competitor or something. Your company's name is that Strips Finance, right? Yeah. It's a similar name, Strip Finance, only S yes, only missing. They're going to list down in the crypto market. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, so uh, it's kind of uh, funny because um, the the company that, that you mentioned um, has a very similar to, name to us. And when they started, um, they actually sent uh, emails to some of our investors with a pitch deck that looked very similar to us, right? And looked very similar to our pitch deck with the same ideas, um, you know, same diagrams and, uh, you know, same terminology, um, which is uh, kind of interesting if it was just a coincidence. Um, and also their website also said in straight swaps, right? Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I found out because one of our investors sent forwarded me their email, right? And, uh, and obviously, you know, um, they, they tried to warn me um, and, uh, you know, the, the investor didn't um, invest in them, obviously. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, um, IP issue um that uh, we're dealing with at the moment. We have, uh, you know, we have gotten lawyers um, to uh prepare a case uh against that because um you know it was, it was very obvious that they were copying our idea and copying our name um but uh you know kind of one area of uh uh that that is funny is that initially they wanted to copy our idea of building interest rate swaps um and then on our initial white paper we mentioned about nfts right and then they they included uh nfts into their website as well um and then uh probably subsequently they they were talking to investors trying to raise funds that uh you know investors probably knew that they didn't know what they were talking about um because interest rate swaps is is a very difficult thing to to understand and and to um, even explain right um and so uh afterwards they pivoted their website and pivoted their idea to to become a nft um exchange or, or something like that anyway i am not 100 percent clear on what what they're doing now um but i'm not um super worried you know we have our lawyers working on it um uh you know this is a legal issue and, and the ip ip theft um but uh yeah we're, we're not worried because it's a difficult thing to do what we're doing right and even if they steal our code i i don't think they they would be successful because it takes more than just uh the code to to run a good exchange and, and to run a good um DeFi project so um you know like i mentioned uh earlier our our business mode is not our product is not our code our business mode and our advantage is our team and our speed of innovation right and as long as we have really great team really great people and as long as our speed of iteration and innovation is faster than anyone else we are always going to come up on top so there's no point worrying about other people 
Oh, great bro, I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Cool. Thanks so much for the question. I think we won't be taking any more uh, questions. Uh, it's been almost uh, two hours. And um, yeah, thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Thank you, Ming, for answering all the questions. I think this is definitely the, uh, the most amount of alpha I've heard this week. Uh, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, no problem. So, it's been a pleasure and thanks for having me. And uh, you know, thanks to everyone for asking their questions. Um, and I hope that uh, you know, I, I was able to answer them. And I, I think we, you know, let's, do, let's do this again soon. Um, I really enjoyed it. Sure, uh, we'll try to do this more often and we're definitely gonna have you guys again, uh, perhaps in a, I guess in a, in a few months or you know, when we're gonna have a bear market. <laughs> It's going to be an interesting <laughs> conversation as well. I think, you know, yeah. bear market sooner yeah. or later comes and uh, when we least expect it. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's going to be very interesting to hear your perspective uh, in a few months. Um, cool, no thanks problem. so much. All right, thanks to everyone uh, once again. Uh, we're going to be doing these weekly about the same time every week and unless uh, something else changes. Uh, maybe we'll do this even more often. Uh, but yeah, uh, and we are, by the way, we are trying to transcribe these articles, you know, these, uh, spaces and we are also like posting them on a few podcast feeds. So, uh, the podcast right now is called working crypto. Uh, I think most of the, uh, podcasting platforms should be adding it in this week. So please subscribe, please rate us, please follow. All right. Thanks once again. All right. Have a good, have a good evening or the rest of the day, depending on which time zone you guys are on. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.